Ephesians chapter 1 The Father's wise plan and the mystery of His will 1 14 The Father's grace, the Son's payment, and the Holy Spirit's seal. 1 15 21 Paul's prayer to the Father for the believers in the body. 1 23 The Father's exaltation of His Son as head of His body. Ephesians is, 1, primarily about the body of Christ corporately, 2, the Father's will, plan, purpose, and destiny for the church, the body of Christ, 3, and his plan to exalt his beloved Son as the preeminent ruler over heaven and earth. It is also about the mystery of Christ and the love of Christ for the church, and how the believer can walk worthy of that love. The first three chapters are doctrinal, what God is doing with the true universal church today, and the last three are the practical application of that doctrine, how we can be a blessing to the Lord and each other. 1. Chapter 1 concerns the mystery of the Father's will, for heaven and earth. Christ is the worthy Redeemer of both realms. The body of Christ has inheritance in God's kingdom, 1 11, 14, and will serve the Father in the heavenly places and the Father also has an inheritance in the church, 1 18. 2. Paul prays to the Father asking for the Ephesians' minds, and ours, to be enlightened to understand and know the doctrine Christ gave him. Ephesians is mainly about what the Father is doing for us through Christ. The us is the church, the body of Christ. His will, 1 colon 2, His grace, 1 colon 2, His will, 1 colon 9, His pleasure, 1 colon 9, His purpose, 1 11, His glory, 1 12, His calling, 1 18, His inheritance, 1 18, His power, 1 19, and His right hand, 1 20. We have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, seven are mentioned here, 1, chosen, 1 colon 4, 2, predestinated, 1 colon 5, 3, accepted, 1 colon 6, 4, redeemed, 1 colon 7, 5, purposed, 1 colon 9, 6, sealed, 1 13, 7, inheritance, 1 14. The phrase unto the praise of his glory occurs three times, in 1 colon 6, the Father accepts us in his Son, in 1 12, our home in heaven, in 1 14, our sealing by the spirit of promise until future redemption of the purchased possession. 1 colon 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, to grace be to you, and peace, from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The entire letter is to and about the body of Christ. Paul introduces us to the love and wisdom of the Father and communicates the mystery Christ gave him to us, 3 2. We often find the Son more approachable than the Father, of whom we have holy fear and respect, but the Father loves us just as much. Paul helps us to build a love and respect relationship with the Father. Paul salutes the Ephesians and the faithful in Christ Jesus who are all believers in Christ, even the present and future members of Peter's group, which was placed on hold in Acts 15, can benefit from Christ's revelation to Paul. All of Paul's letters were meant to circulate. Because Jesus Christ was the sacrifice God can offer grace and peace, 2 Cor. 5 19, Rom. 11 15, in contrast in the future, Jesus Christ comes to judge and make war, Revelation 19 verse 11. Paul lets us know that the Father was behind everything that Christ did for us. It was the Father's will and His good pleasure. Since Colossians was written at the same time as Ephesians, each of these letters helps us understand the other. Ephesians is primarily about the corporate body of Christ, BOC, because individual justification, salvation, was covered in Romans. Paul expects us to already understand Romans to Galatians. Romans is to the body of Christ what Hebrews is to the little flock, and Ephesians is for us what Revelation is for Peter's group. Romans 9-11 is about election for service in heaven and on earth. In Romans we found out about the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us, Rom. 9-23, 24a, are Peter's and Paul's groups, Rom. 8-33, 2 Tim. 2.10, God has always had a remnant of believers. Peter's group was a foolish nation, Rom. 10.19, for believing the truth that Jesus Christ is Israel's Messiah. Even so then, at this present time also there is a remnant, Peter's group were placed on hold in Acts 15 slash Gal. 2 colon 7 dash 9 and are diminishing, dying out, because they are not to accept new converts, according to the election of grace. 
And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. What then? Israel, unbelieving apostate Israel, hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election, Peter's group, hath obtained it, and the rest, the unbelieving in Israel, were blinded, Rom. 11.5-7 It is essential to know that the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace began in Acts 9 with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus, Acts 9 verses 15 and 16, 22 colon 6 16, 26 colon 16 18, not in Acts 2 with the coming of the Holy Ghost on the little flock of Messianic Jewish believers in the upper room on the Jewish feast day of Pentecost. Acts 2 is just a continuation of Christ's earthly ministry recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The mystery began in Acts 9 with Christ's appearing to Paul and will end at the rapture with Christ's appearing to the body of Christ in the air, Titus 2 verse 11 and 13. The dispensation of grace is inside a gigantic parenthesis between these two appearings of Christ. God is dispensing grace in the dispensation of grace, 3 colon 2. We live in a sin-cursed world but we will be taken out of it, Gal, 1 colon 4, 1 Thess, 4 16, 17. God is not sending Jacob's trouble, Ja. 30 colon 7, the tribulation, until after the rapture, 1 Thess, 1 10. The tribulation is part of the fifth course of chastisement that God will pour out on Israel because of their spiritual idolatry, Leviticus. 26 colon 27 46, and has nothing to do with the body of Christ. When we separate Christ's instructions to the body of Christ through Paul in Romans to Philemon from Christ's instructions to Peter's group and other kingdom on earth believers in the rest of the Bible, then we are rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Tim 2 15. 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Paul blessed the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ as a way of praising Him for His plan, work, and love in our formation and salvation. This chapter is primarily about the Father. Notice the us in this verse and in verse 4 and the we elsewhere. The us and the we is the church, the body of Christ. God the Father planned the church. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, but we find out about those blessings by reading Paul's letters. There are many things that other believers need to know that they already possess. Many believers have no idea how wealthy we are the instant we believe. There are many places in heaven and we will have job positions there. Paul refers to the heavenly places four times and high places once, 1 colon 3, 1 20, 2 colon 6, 3 10, 6 12. Please notice that 1 colon 3 dash 6 is in regard to the Father, 1 colon 7 dash 12 in regard to His Son, and 1 13, 14 in regard to the Holy Spirit. It was the Father's will, the Son's work, and the Holy Spirit's witness to us of the truth in His Word. God is the one who did all the saving, our part was just to believe. The entire Godhead is involved in the revelation of our riches in the mystery, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. Colossians 2 verse 2. Paul says the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he is his God as far as Christ being man in human flesh is concerned, and he is the Son of God the Father. 117. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ is God. John 1 colon 1. 1030, Rom. 1 colon 4, 2 Cor. 119, Titus 2 verse 13, Heb. 1 colon 8, the Father became the Father and God of Israel's believing remnant after Christ resurrected from the grave. Jesus saith unto her, Mary Magdalene, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. John 20 verse 17. Paul let us know that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ is our God and Father also. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, 1 colon 3. We have received all our blessings up front, and they are waiting for us in the heavenly realm. We have everything because we are in Christ. Many of Israel's blessings were material, but ours are all spiritual. God is working on our inner man, spirit and soul, since our outer man, body, will be replaced, and we will live in heaven, 2 colon 6, 2 core, 4 colon 16 18, 
5 colon 1, not on earth. This is why it may seem that God is silent, but he is not. He lives and works in and through us and other believers. Seven blessings are specifically mentioned in this chapter and we have them all. We are 1. Chosen 1 colon 4 2. Predestinated 1 colon 5 3. Accepted 1 colon 6 4. Redeemed 1 colon 7 5. Purposed 1 colon 9 6. Sealed 1 13 7. And have an inheritance 114. God tells us everything we need to know in the Bible. When we go to the heavenly places, we can only take with us the doctrine that we have stored up in our inner man, spirit, and soul. Our inheritance in God's kingdom is in the heavenly places. Our eternal life and wealth there began the instant we were saved, is certain and secure. For according as he, the Father, hath chosen us in him, Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, the Father, in love, how are we chosen in him before the foundation of the world and how can we be without blame before him in love? When we are in him by faith, then we receive his imputed righteousness, his life in us, 2 Cor. 521, Gal. 220, God chose the body of Christ to be in Christ before the foundation of the world, not every individual that will be in that group, although in his foreknowledge. God knew every individual that would believe. God wants us to be holy and without blame before him in love, and we can when we have our glorified bodies and his son in us. Because we have his perfect life, we are perfectly blameless. We are perfect because we are in him who is perfect, righteous, holy, and worthy, not because of anything we have done. Believing does not involve doing of any kind, it is just faith. In fact, when we try to do something of our own to add to Christ's finished work on Calvary, we insult God and make our salvation void, wrong. 4 colon 3, 5, 14. We are in love because we are in the beloved. The Father loves his Son more than anything, and we are in him. The Father chose us, the body of Christ, in Jesus Christ, before the foundation of the world. Before God created the heaven and the earth, he decided that he would make a group of blameless people to live in the heavenly places. In his foreknowledge, God knew who would believe. Knowing what someone is going to do and causing them to do it are two different things. God did not choose each person who would be saved in the body of Christ, rather he had decided on the agency. The agency or group called the body of Christ was predestined for heaven, not the individual believers. God named the two realms of his kingdom in the first verse of the Bible. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. Our destination was determined before the foundations of the world, 1 colon 4, but kept secret since the world began, wrong. 1625. Paul was a chosen vessel, Christ chose to save him, Paul was the first sinner saved into the body of Christ, 1 Tim. 1 15, 16. Peter's group was chosen, set apart, and received the Holy Ghost, Acts 2.38, 26 colon 18, before us. Next Paul's group was chosen, and now we are in that chosen group. It was determined before the world began that Christ would be the sacrifice. Peter also said the little flock was redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, 1 Peter 1 verse 19, 20a. Salvation is not something we do, but something Jesus Christ has already done, for this reason it is foolish not to just believe and be saved. Christ suffered to save us, but Paul suffered to make the mysteries of Christ known, Colossians 1 verse 24. 5 Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, the Father, according to the good pleasure of his, the Father's, will, God the Father planned the church. Predestination means our destination was determined ahead of time before the foundation of the world. The body of Christ was predestined to live in the heavenly places. The earthly believers were predestined to be gathered together to live in the kingdom on earth. God will have one kingdom with two realms in the future dispensation of the fullness of times, 110. We have the spirit of adoption now and can serve him as sons, Rom. 815. The Father predestined us to be his adopted children to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. We have the spirit of adoption since we have the Son of God in us and we take our places as adopted sons, jobs, after we receive our glorified bodies, Rom. 823. We have the Son of God in us by faith in Christ and we are being conformed to him, 2 Cor. 3 17, 18, F. 
4 colon 13 dash 15 gal 4 19 rom 8 29 12 colon 1 2 we are predestined unto the adoption adoption means placing as a son we were made sons of god the moment we were saved the father has predestined that the believers in the body of christ receive the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father gal for colon 6 and be placed as sons into his family business every believer is the father's children by jesus christ in his family but our placement as sons is after the rapture our son placement was according to the good pleasure of the father's will we don't deserve this grace or anything our noble and good god decided to help us in our helpless and sinful condition he doesn't ask anything from us except that we believe what jesus christ has done when we believe, then our sins are forgiven. Christ, Messiah, is the title of Jesus and Paul respectfully uses it here. Jesus means Jehovah Savior. He is the Savior for the believers in heaven and on earth. Six to the praise of the glory of His grace, the Father, wherein He, the Father, hath made us, the body of Christ, accepted in the Beloved, Jesus Christ. We are accepted because we have believed in His Son and received His righteousness, to core. 521 we are complete in him colossians 2 verse 10 his beloved son we are not accepted because of our self-righteousness because we were sinners that sinned rom 512 we sin even after we are saved because the sinful flesh resides in our bodies rom 723 but we can live right if we walk not after the flesh but after the spirit rom 8 colon 1 dash 4 the phrase to the praise of his glory occurs three times. It is to the praise of the glory of the grace of the Father to make the body of Christ accepted in his beloved Son, Matt. 3.17 God already sees the body of Christ members seated with Christ in heaven because God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, wrong. 4.17 The powers of darkness cannot overthrow God's divine purpose or rob us of our inheritance in heaven because we are safe in him. It was Christ's work. We are in Him and He is in us. Grace is all that God the Father is free to do for us on the basis of His Son's work on Calvary. Grace is defined as unmerited favor. It was Christ who had the merit, not us. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Seven in whom, the beloved, Christ, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His, the Father's, grace, God the Son paid the price for the church nearly 2,000 years ago. The price to redeem us was very high. It was the beloved Son's own righteous blood that purchased our redemption. Paul had told the Ephesians on his way to Jerusalem to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood, Acts 20 verse 28. The Son willingly died in our place for our sins and gave us His righteousness so the Father could, by the riches of His grace, remain just and justly declare believers righteous, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26, 4 colon 3 dash 5, 23 to 25. God solved the sin problem by giving believers the gift of his son's righteousness, wrong. 517, Paul revealed that by one cross our Lord Jesus Christ single-handedly saved two groups and the Father can impute his spirit to both and use us to reclaim heaven and earth. Believing Israel will receive glorified bodies and his spirit under the new covenant and be a kingdom of priests in prophecy, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, Dan 12 colon 2, John 5 verses 26 to 29, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, Heb 8 colon 8 dash 10, we have forgiveness of sins because we have been redeemed, bought out to the slave market of sin, self, and Satan, by the obedience of Jesus Christ through our faith in his blood, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26. He bought us to set us free. I read about a beautiful slave girl in the South. She was on the slave block. There was a very cruel slave owner, a brutal man that began to bid for her. Every time he would bid, the girl would cringe and a look of fear would come over her face. A plantation owner who was kind to his slaves was there. He began to bid for her. He put down the price and started to walk away. The girl followed him, but he turned to her and said, You misunderstand. I bought you to set you free. I didn't buy you because I needed a slave. I bought you to set you free. She simply stood there, stunned for a moment. Then she suddenly fell to her knees. Why? She said, 
I will serve you forever. This illustrates the basis by which we want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He loved us, he gave himself for us and shed his blood so that we could have forgiveness of sins. Salvation is a free gift. God paid for us to set us free, so now we freely love him. All God asks is that we believe and receive the gift of forgiveness to have eternal life with him. I read this gripping story in Through the Bible with J. Vernon McGee Volume 5 on page 222. God counts me holy and blameless in the person of his beloved son. God took every ugly, evil thing that I had ever done, do, and will ever do and nailed who I was in the past, my old Adam, to the cross. King David had done some evil things, murder, and adultery, 2 Sam, 12 9, 13. But Paul wrote that David described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin, wrong. 4 6 8. If God does not count my sin against me any longer after I believed, then neither should I. My sin was spiritually crucified, buried, and I resurrected with him, and so I can walk in newness of life, wrong. 6 4, not my life, his life. God gave me a fresh start, he let me start over when I was saved. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me, Gal. 2.20 I start over every second of every day when I renew my mind and am led by the Spirit under grace, Rom. 8.14 12 colon 2. King David loved God and God loved King David. We walk in love, completely set free from who we were. We reckon that what God said about us is true and we live in the light of that knowledge, just as God said to us through our apostle Paul, Rom. 6 colon 3 dash 18. We want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with hearts of love and gratitude because he first loved us and gave himself for us. He shed his blood so that we could have forgiveness of sins. God paid for us to set us free, so now we freely love him. All God asks is that we believe and receive the gift of forgiveness to have eternal life with him. Paul's prayer for me in the second half of this chapter has come true. I have been enlightened to know what the Father, who loves me, wants me to know. 8 Wherein he, the Father, hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, our wise Father has abounded to us in all wisdom and prudence. Prudence is foreseeing evil and avoiding it, PROV. 8 12, 22 colon 3, 27 colon 12. It was prudent of God to give out his word progressively through prophets and to wait for a year after the cross to reveal his solution to man's sin problem to Paul and the agency and dispensation we, the body of Christ belong to. God kept the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace a secret or Satan would not have crucified the Lord of glory, 1 Cor. 2 6 8. Remember, Satan entered Judas to make sure the Son of God was crucified, Luke 22 verse 3, but the cross was Satan's demise, Heb. 2 14, Revelation 1 verse 18. Christ triumphed over Satan on the cross, Colossians 2 verse 15, 1 Cor. 3 19. God solved mankind's sin problem because his son not only paid for our sins with his blood, his perfect life allowed the father to impute his son's righteousness, his spirit, his life, to Peter's and Paul's group. 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he, the father, might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, eleven in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, twelve that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. God the Father has made known to us through Paul the mystery of his will, which is according to his good pleasure which the Father purposed in himself. Hidden God was his secret decision to form another group of people to live in the heavenly places. This mystery has now been revealed to us through Paul, Rom. 1625-26. Some may wonder what dispensation means. Paul is the only writer that uses the word dispensation, he uses it four times in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17, Ephesians 1 10, 3 colon 2, Colossians 1 verse 25. To dispense means to distribute, give out. 
a gas station, dispenses gasoline. God dispenses a set of instructions for a group of people to follow for a specific period of time. God never changes, but his instructions to mankind have changed over time. Some could not eat a certain fruit, one had to build an ark, another had to believe that he would have descendants who would become a nation and inherit a land, etc. God is the originator of his dispensations. But all modern Bibles change the word dispensation to stewardship, administration, etc. in all or some of the four places obscuring the clarity of God's dispensational shift and change of instructions from his earthly people to his heavenly people in Acts 9. Christ has different instructions for his earthly believers from that of his heavenly believers. Everyone who is in that kingdom of God are in Christ. But the earthly believers are not in the body of Christ. The Redeemer of all mankind will rule the kingdom of God. Colossians 4 verse 11 Before Paul no one knew that the temple of God, also known as the household of God, F. 219, was a duplex. The blueprint for the whole other side of the building was not known until Christ from heaven revealed it to Paul. The duplex represents the family of true believers in heaven and earth. F. 315. The little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, believers were in Christ according to prophecy, but not in Christ according to the mystery. Andronicus and Unia were of note among the 12 apostles and were little flock believers who were in Christ before Paul, Rom. 16 colon 7. These little flock believers helped Paul because God was only saving people into our group, Gal. 1 colon 6 dash 9. We, in the church the body of Christ, have obtained our part or inheritance, heaven, in that kingdom because we trusted in Christ's finished crosswork as sufficient payment for our sins. Our inheritance is in heaven. Israel gets her land on earth. Upon salvation every believer automatically become joint heirs with Christ. Rom. 8.17 Everything that belongs to him belongs to us. It was determined by the Godhead before the foundation of the earth that the new creature, Gal. 615, the body of Christ, would live in heaven and the other group of believers on earth. Peter talked about the determined counsel of God, Acts 2 verses 22 to 24. God's purpose, the counsel of the Father's will, is being worked out while still allowing mankind free will like the angels. We are not robots. The members of the body of Christ who trust what Christ did for them will be part of those who praise and give glory to God the Son. The Father will see that His Son receives all the praise which He alone is worthy to receive. It is the mystery of the Father's will to gather all things, governmental structures, in heaven and on earth into one, the body of Christ predestined to have an inheritance in heaven, and the kingdom believers have an inheritance on earth, in the dispensation of the fullness of times. After the great white throne judgment of the lost, comes the dispensation of the fullness of times when both realms in heaven and earth will be gathered together in one. The new earth will most likely be surrounded by the new heaven which may have 12 zones or jurisdiction. The time will be full for those in heaven and earth that have believed God to serve him. God will have worked all things together for his purpose and every believer in his kingdom will have the spirit of his son, his life, in them. Because we have Christ's life in us, we have obtained an inheritance in the heavenly places to rule over the good angels who will help us. 1 Cor. 6 3. When the angels serve us, they are really serving Christ who is in us. The Gentiles who serve Israel in the kingdom will really be serving Christ who is in them. God works all things together for good according to his purpose and the counsel of his will. Rom. 8.28. God will do what he intends to do and no one can stop him. PSA. 2 colon 1 dash 8 ISA 46 colon 10 In his great love, the son asked the father to give him the heathen for a possession and the father gave the son the Gentiles, PSA 2 colon 8 In prophecy, in the kingdom, Paul explained it was his great love to save the heathen in mystery also, Rom 8 32, 33, 39 Today Jews are considered to be heathen, 2 Gal 2 colon 9 the body of Christ is to the praise of his glory for you us who first trusted in Christ. 13 in whom, Christ, ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, 14 which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Paul said, We who first trusted in Christ, 112, and now said ye Ephesians and faithful in Christ Jesus also trusted in Christ's sacrifice after they heard the risen, glorified Jesus Christ preached to them according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, they believed the gospel of your salvation, 113. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, Rom. 1017, for English speakers, the precise and exact words is in the King James Bible are our final authority. Paul is writing about how the body of Christ is saved collectively and individually. Each individual believer is sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and the entire body of Christ is sealed. Notice the hour. It is as if the believer is placed into a plastic bag and zipped closed by the Holy Spirit and then we are placed in a larger plastic bag which is also zipped closed, Colossians 3 verse 3. Each individual has the Holy Spirit in them and the entire body of Christ is sealed with the Holy Spirit corporately. Since the beginning of the dispensation of grace in Acts 9, each member of the body of Christ was called by the gospel and guaranteed to be raptured, 2 Thess. 2 13, 14, when we trust, believe, what Christ has done for us, then by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, one core. 12 13, our seal is a done deal, a finished transaction of a purchased possession that cannot be changed or reversed. A seal signifies, 1, receipt of a finished transaction, Ja. 32 colon 9, 10, John 17 colon 4, 1930. 2. Witnessed ownership, Je. Jeremiah 32 verses 11 and 12, 2 Tim. 2 19, 3. Security the purchase cannot be reversed or changed, for 30 EST. 8 colon 8, Dan. 6 17, we are securely sealed until our rapture. God knows everyone that has truly believed. The Holy Spirit indwells each believer. Each member of the Godhead dwells in us, the Father, F. For colon 6, the Son, Rom. 8 colon 9, 2 Cor. For colon 7, 10, 11, Gal. 2 20, Colossians 1 verse 27, and the Holy Ghost, Rom. 5 colon 5, 2 Tim. 1 14, trust, faith, and believe all mean the same thing. Admission into the body of Christ is by faith in the blood of Christ after we hear the true pure gospel of our salvation. Our gospel is, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. The logical next step after hearing the truth is to believe in our hearts. The believer and the body of Christ are sealed and can never be unsealed. The Holy Spirit is our security deposit or down payment or earnest of the Spirit, 2 Cor. 5 colon 5, that we will receive our inheritance in heaven the redemption of the purchased possession, the entire body of Christ are caught up at the rapture, is unto the praise of his glory. In the future, we will join with the earthly believers in the glorious celebration of God's victory in the gigantic game for the throne. Christ is the possessor of heaven and earth. In the long war that has raged against Lucifer who became Satan from before God made Adam, ISA. 14 colon 12 dash 19, Ezek. 28 colon 1 dash 19, Revelation 20 verse 10, 1 Cor. 15 colon 22 dash 26, 57. God has allowed Satan to maintain his position in the second heaven and have access to the earth until the day God will bring final judgment on him. Christ triumphed over Satan on the cross, Colossians 2 verse 15. The Lord Jesus Christ bruised Satan's head, a lethal blow. But, the Father is in the process of working out his total grand plan. Satan is a defeated foe, but his sentence has not yet been carried out. His spirit in us gives us the capacity for God, holiness, and fellowship. We can join together with adoring gratitude and loving worship of God. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise, Hab. 3 colon 3. We will celebrate the Father's brave, loving, selfless Son and thank the Father for his grand plan. 
We are so proud and grateful for our Savior that we sing with joy in our hearts, but we also have sorrow that we were so bad that he had to suffer and sacrifice himself for our sake. The Lord Jesus Christ is the victor, the redeemer by his heroic, obedient, trust and faith in the Father's glory plan. It was the Father's plan and the Son's last will and testament as the testator, Heb. 9,15-17, that by the blood of the New Testament to save both groups, 2 Cor. 3,6, Heb. 11,40, the Son's death and resurrection allow the Father to impute His Son's righteousness to two groups and to resurrect them in eternal glorified bodies like His Son's, Phil. 3,20, 21, 1 Cor. 15,40, the promise of the Father, Acts 1 verse 4, the Comforter, John 14 verses 16 and 26, 15 26, 16 colon 7. The Holy Ghost spoken of by Christ came down on Pentecost, Acts 2 verse 4, the Spirit was a foretaste of the kingdom, Heb. 6 colon 4. Paul informed us that the body of Christ also receives the promise of the Spirit, Gal. 3 colon 14 dash 16, 4 colon 6. No one can be saved apart from being in Christ and having Christ's Spirit in them. After we, the one new man, 215, 2 Thess, 2 colon 7, is taken up at the rapture, the Holy Ghost will remain on earth and there will be darkness before light comes into more souls, 1 John 1 colon 7, 4 colon 2. 15 Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, 16 cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us ward who believe, according to the working of his, the Father's, mighty power, 20 which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, 21 far above all principality, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is, named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, 22 and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, 23 which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. After an outflowing of praise for our spiritual possessions, Paul makes an outpouring of prayer for our spiritual perception. Paul prays for the new believers in Ephesus, and for the us, the faithful in Christ Jesus, who were saved during his years of absence. Paul had heard of their faith, probably from Tychicus in 621, and their love unto all the saints which was evidence of their salvation. Paul does not cease to give thanks for them, and making mention of them in his prayers. The growth of the body of Christ was exceedingly encouraging to Paul. Paul's prayer is one long sentence. Paul prays and asks the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory to give the BOC. 1. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of himself. Paul prays for us to know the Father. 17. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened, illuminated, because Satan wants to conceal Christ's good news to us through Paul. 2 Cor. For colon 3, 4, so we may know the hope of the Father's calling, to serve in heaven, and the riches of the glory of his, the Father's, inheritance in the saints, 18. The hope of our calling is to serve as ambassadors here and to serve as his sons and daughters there in heaven. 2. That we may know what the riches of the glory of the Father's inheritance in the saints for we will serve him in heaven with love and gratitude. The Father will assign us our jobs after Christ presents us to him, Colossians 3 verse 4. His Son's Spirit will be multiplied in His subjects who will gratefully serve the Father and the Son forever. We will help bring the heavenly places into subjection to His Son. 3. Paul wants the BOC to know the exceeding greatness of His, the Father's, power to us word who believe. 19. According to the working of His, the Father's, mighty power. 20. Which the Father wrought, worked, in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Paul combines Christ's ascensions after his death are in this verse, his ascension on the first day of the week and his ascension 40 days later from the Mount of Olives. The Father's resurrection and ascension power demonstrates that the BOC will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thess. 417, and live with him. The Father has exalted his Son far above all levels of government in heaven and earth. 
After saving Saul in Acts 9, the sun was seated far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Some will sit on a throne like a king, others will rule a dominion like a lord, some will reign over a principality like a prince, some will govern over a power like a ruler, still others will be over a might like a soldier, and all the rest will be among every name that is named like a basic private. I was helped with this list by an article written by Sean Bersow on ROM. 817, not only in this world, this dispensation, but also in that which is to come, the next dispensation and eternity future. 21. The Father hath put all things, levels of power, Colossians 1 verses 15 to 18, in heaven and earth under his, Christ's, feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. 22. Which is his body, Christ is the head of the church, the body of Christ, the fullness of the Son filleth all, continually fills all levels of power and authority, in all, the Son is in all believers, 23. Christ owns us and fills every believer, he is in us and we are in him. God fills all that belong to him. Christ's spirit will be in all believers in heaven and on earth, Matt. 28 colon 18. The Father's power raised Jesus Christ from the dead and set his Son at his own right hand, the exalted position of power. Not only was it resurrection power but also ascension power. On the first day of the week, John 20 verses 1 and 17, the Son resurrected and ascended to the Father. After the Lord Jesus returned, he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matt. 28 colon 18. Then after 40 days on earth, the Lord Jesus Christ again ascended to the Father from the Mount of Olives, Acts 1 verses 9 to 12. After saving Saul in Acts 9 the Son was seated far above all. Principality. We can be confident that the same power that raised and ascended his Son will catch up our entire sealed group to heaven. Christ has won the war against the adversary, but he has not taken possession of heaven or earth and restored all things yet. He wants to save some more people in our dispensation and the next. When all things are subdued under the Son's feet, the Son will voluntarily subject himself to the Father. In the end, Christ will give his Father everything and we will glorify the Godhead, while the fullness of Christ will fill all things. Christ will be exalted as the preeminent ruler over heaven and earth. Both heaven and earth believers will adore him and give him all the glory as he rules and reigns over both realms. The Father may be the preeminent supreme ruler of the two realms in the kingdom from heaven, while his Son will be the preeminent ruler of the two realms of the kingdom from the earth. Remember Jacob's ladder, Genesis 28 verse 12, John 1 verse 51. The Father has already ordained that his Son is exalted far above all rulers in this world, the mystery dispensation of grace, and in the world to come, Christ has eternal authority over heaven and earth. God will gloriously permeate all things beautifully, melodiously, and harmoniously like a grand orchestra conductor, so all things can play a grand symphony. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all, one core. 1528. Paul's selfless prayer is an example of how we are to pray. Paul knew the BOC would need enlightenment. Enlightenment or illumination is the process whereby the truth of scripture gets off the page and into the soul of the believer. Illumination is the spiritual process that occurs in the inner man of the believer as God the Holy Spirit takes the written word of God that the Spirit wrote and communicates it to the believer's inner man, one core. 2 colon 9-16. This is how insight, spiritual growth, and learning take place and how sound doctrine is stored up in the believer's soul. Paul wants the believers to understand the mystery, Colossians 1 verses 23 to 27, and the mystery of the Father's will. The battle is for the mind and we must pray similarly as our pattern Paul because Satan wants to conceal what Christ through Paul has revealed. 2 Cor. 4, 3, 4. Paul's prayer to the Father for the Ephesian believers was not for material things, but for spiritual things. Christ is inspiring Paul so it is also Christ praying through him. Paul is our pattern, 1 Tim, 1.16, for how we can have a mature prayer life. Paul often begins his prayers by thanking God for the believers, Rom, 1 colon 8, 1 Cor, 1 colon 4, Phil, 1 colon 3, Philemon 1 verse 4. We can learn how to pray correctly by studying how Paul prays. He prays to the Father by the Son, for the saints. 
He is thankful to God for the increase, more body of Christ members being added to the new creature. Gratitude and thankfulness soften our hearts to take in more of the word of God. It changes our attitude into one of gratitude. Pray for those who come to your mind. Paul knows that if the saints understand the truth the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are presenting to them through him, they will be more firmly rooted and grounded in the faith, the revelation of the mystery, 317, Colossians 2 verse 7. Paul wants his and our ministry to be fruitful and effective for Christ. Paul's prayers are focused on God's will and the welfare of the body of Christ. Our prayers should also be focused on God's will for all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, what the church is not. 1 Timothy 3 verse 151, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 132, Colossians 1 verse 183. The church is not a building. It's not made of brick and mortar. It's the pillar and ground of the truth one, righteous and holy in every quarter. The church is not a denomination, though represented by every nation. Of those who have faith for salvation, baptized into one body for habitation too. The church is the house of God, called out ones or an assembly, of which Jesus Christ is the head three, only through him do you gain entry. The church is not perfect, but it is free and by God's grace it's home to you and me. By Alistair M. MacDonald, TGBTG, August 12th, 2022.